I like roll and write games and I definitely like the next station system. We have had games about Paris, about Tokyo, well, about London, Tokyo and now also Paris. I like the system so much and when last year I donated most of my game collection to the little library, I kept one. I kept the Tokyo one, one of the very few games that made the cut. I gave the London one that I also like, uh, simply because I thought it would be nice that the little library had one. Now we have a new one, Paris, the general idea, even just starting from the box and the design and everything, is very similar. Ooh, I wonder, no, they don't make a single image, wouldn't that be nice? The idea is you're gonna have this box with this nice metal clip holding it close. You have uh, cards held together by paper strips. Then you have four color pencils in a paper case or bag, roll box, and then a big stack of, of a big pad of game, uh, of game sheets. Each player will need one every time that you play, but they're, they're double-sided, so they should last you for a little bit. The game is in essence multiplayer solo, there's no direct interaction, everybody will respond to a visual prompt. So actually it's not a... did I call it roll and write? I might have, of course, I mean flip and write. So everybody will respond to a visual prompt provided by the set of cards and you will draw a line based on that one and then after you, everybody draws that one you reveal another card and you repeat like that until five of these other cards of these cards with the blue background blue and green background are revealed so in this case for example we play through the entire deck but if this was how the cards have been shuffled then the round will be over when this one is revealed and those two are not played so there's a variable number of cards uh, that is actually going to be used in each round. The game lasts four rounds and each round each player will use a different pencil. So if you have four players you just give one to each player and then once we're done we pass them around and we continue like this until everybody has used each pencil once to create one of four lines. I played the game solo. I haven't played it multiplayer in a while and I, this one also I played it solo and it's very simple. <laughs> I take the first round, doesn't matter which color I use first, and then I'm done, and then I use another, and then I use another, and then I use another. Again, since there is no interaction among players whatsoever, the only thing that matters is that in multiplayer you're trying to have the highest score at the end, in solo you're trying to have a very high score at the end and beat yourself, meaning uh, beat your previous high score. So suppose I decided to start with this one. Now here on this map of Paris, uh, you may be familiar with some of the previous games, so you may want to see what are the differences here. As in previous maps, uh, you're going to have different starting points uh, of different colors, so if I am playing with purple, I will start building out of here. And then the map is divided into districts, uh, and there are four tiny districts on the corner, similar to other games, but you also have a large district here, which is like the central platform or something like that. So, its own district, and as you can see, it accepts uh, any kind of symbol. You can always build into it and out of it as if it was a super mega station. You also have these other spaces here representing monuments and there will be some cards that will allow you to build to and through them. If you're gonna build with this card, I can build to any connection that I want or to a monument and then from there to any other connection. And also we have overpasses there, there will be points uh, uh, given for building into uh, one of those connections following all the other rules of course and also if you're able to have lines both under and above the overpass then you score six points which is pretty sweet and I found that also to be fairly difficult to do. Ah, makes it worth it to, to try to get it. So that's the idea that we are gonna draw a card and look at the symbol. So for example, I'm playing with purple and I got a circle there. So I need to build a connection that goes to a circle. 
right now round one I'm starting from there I only I don't have any choice I have that one there that's it everybody does that and then we go to the next symbol I got a square and when I start having a natural line I need to uh, start from either end of my line again with two that's not too complicated I suppose that would be I go to that square there meaning that now the next symbol I need to build it out of this one or out of this one I wouldn't usually be able to build it out of that one unless I flip there you go oh my gosh I'm good at this unless to explain things unless I flip that one which means you're gonna draw another card immediately and now this symbol can exceptionally branch out and so I can reach a pentagon and I could but only because of that symbol there I could build out of this one here and uh, maybe I want to go here look at that so that's the general idea we're gonna build our connections uh, one at a time uh, flipping cards everybody does the same then again we switch uh, pencil and we play until we have built um, four lines and then we score points how do we score for each line and actually I like to score this as soon as I'm done with a line before I move to the next one for each line you're gonna score points for each district that it reaches or crosses so long lines will score you well in this category right now for example this one uh, is going through one district two districts only and that's okay I just started but I would write a two there this one is the number of, uh, of stations that you have in a single district and you want to choose the highest one uh, so for example that would be a three for me right now and I would write a three there so you multiply the length for scoring this category you multiply the length of the line by the number of stations in a single district the one where you have the most meaning you have an incentive to connect a certain area very well and then go as far as you can crossing as many districts as possible each monument that your line um, goes through will uh, score you two points that's how you score the category starting from round two you may have multiple uh, multiple uh, lines going into the same station for example I cleverly connected there because I will start the orange line from there so I already have for sure a station that will have two lines going into it it gets a little trickier at times because you cannot go through single lines for example how by building that so I will never be able to build that overpass there because you would cut that line I could still build out of there for example that way so points for stations that connect uh, multiple lines uh, two points for two th five points for a station with three nine points for a station with four and this is probably the most realistic where you'll be able to score that again those overpasses uh, two points for going into and six points for going into one of those from both sides and then you have variable things happening. You have variants, uh, mini expansions, I would say. You have two. One of the mini expansions will give you extra way of scoring points. Um, and this is the one for extra ways of scoring points. And then you'll have another one with special powers. You will place these cards in the middle of the table like so and then you shuffle these other cards and you mass them randomly now these are not ways of scoring points they are ways they are bonuses extra advantage that you gain when you collect the tiny district in the corner of the corresponding type so if i was to if i was to reach that uh, uh, corner district there the triangle one then I get to immediately build two lines if I build to the square I get to branch out and build a line and so on and so forth oh these two I would get to score things more I outline a station or a tiny district and I get to score it double later this is the idea very similar as you may know for, to, to per, from similar to previous games in exactly the same system 
And I'm happy because I like the previous system very much. I find it fun, simple, relaxing. This morning I played the game early in the morning, uh, right after breakfast, before I had to go uh, to my work and teach. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll leave the things out because I started this one, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna play right after I'm done with this video. But I can put these away because you know nothing against the expansions. If you like them, then you have them, alright. But I just like the elegance and simplicity of the basic game. I like it as this. I find these uh, less interesting and a bit distracting. Again, totally personal opinion there. But the game system is one that is simple, light, and fun. Uh, if they had a complaint, which I don't, but you might, who knows, it would be that this game is very, very similar to the previous ones. The map changes, but frankly, I haven't played the other one in at least a year. I can't tell you, oh, I used to go here and now I cannot go there. I don't remember the level of granularity. The games in the system have the same general idea, which I like very much, hooray, two thumbs up, and the little tweaks, little variants and changes here. The monuments are really nice um, because they almost feel like one of those uh, wild symbols, uh, but not quite, because when you get the monument, it doesn't mean that you can go anywhere you want. If I'm going from there to that monument, then I have some choices. I can go to a pentagon or a triangle, doesn't mean exactly everywhere I want, but you go there and then you have some choices there. The overpass, again, uh, very challenging uh, to, to do both. Uh, but it's another interesting thing because six points, pretty sweet. So that's, uh, that's really nice. After the first game that I loved, every other game in the system, and I love those also, were about teeny tiny changes to reinvigorate, to rejuvenate gameplay. The major additions here, which is a wild air in the middle of the board, the monuments, the overpasses are all nice and cool. I don't think they change gameplay substantially, and I'm happy with that because I like it, but it gives me a different way to play a game system that I like very much. All of the advantages that I have from the other previous games are here. It's small, it's portable, heck, with just these components, I could just carry the sheet of paper with me and play it anywhere. I can play it solo and uh, if you play multiplayer, well, it shouldn't have too much downtime because uh, everybody plays at the same time. And the strategy, the challenge, the push your luck, uh, the fact that you don't know exactly if a turn is going to be very short to go through all 12 cards. Super fun, super nice because you have a nice, interesting challenge there. If anything, I would say the idea of having a connection open next to a monument uh, because some of those cards will come out with monuments that adds a little bit again of spice of, of flavor to the entire idea in general again if the only complaint i may see somebody have is if people think that this game is too similar to the previous ones because it is very similar but I like them, and I like this light variant that we have here, so I'm extremely happy with it. I like every game so far in the next station, Paris, um, the next station system. I like the Paris implementation. What's gonna be next? Rome? Nah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I was there last year, and who knows? I'll enjoy that. So, next station. Great game system in general, and Paris is a solid, light, simple, yet engaging multiplayer solo.